If you're into 3D printing, you already know the steps to get started with electronics. I'll explain it all on today's Film It Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Film It Friday is also brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. I've spent many years helping people get started with 3D printing through profiles and Ender 3 tips and tricks, and now 3D printing has come to a point where you don't need as much help. In fact, a lot of people are teaching me things about 3D printing. But my core strength was never 3D printing. My core strength was electronics. In fact, I've written several books, including a book on Arduino, to help you get started with electronics. So I thought the fact that the channel is actually CHEP, Chuck Hullabuck's Electronic Products, is a great opportunity to reintroduce electronics to my audience because I know a lot of people that are into 3D printing probably want to get into electronics as well. Now, I'm not going to stop 3D printing on the channel. I love to do it, and I love to share the information that I find, including new printers or new features that are coming out. But I want to add more electronics to the channel, so maybe we combine the two projects that have electronics and 3D printing together. Now, when I mention electronics, a lot of people think Arduino, and there's a ton of information all over the place, so I'm not going to regurgitate what's out there. I said I have my book. In fact, all my books are available to those who are gold members on Patreon or are members at things.com. They, they have access to all my books in PDF form. But Arduino is just one piece of the puzzle. Now, some will also say, well, what about Raspberry Pi? Well, Raspberry Pi is really more of a computer than a microcontroller. Because this isn't a microcontroller. It's the chip that's on board. In fact, I designed my own Arduino-style module many, many years ago. And I actually used it in my volume three of my Embedded C programming book. And so I would go around to Maker Fair and try to explain people about how to get started in electronics. And this was a prop that my father-in-law made for me. He's a woodworker. And he made a big version of my Chapino module. But I bring this up because this is the microcontroller. The same thing that's on the Uno right here. This is the microcontroller. The rest of this circuitry and connectors is just the development board part to make it easier to work with the microcontroller. But this is what we're actually programming. And this is where the two worlds of 3D printing and electronics really come together because they follow a very similar path. So if you're familiar with 3D printing, you know this is an Ender 3. And this is actually run by a microcontroller. There's actually an Arduino board inside this thing controlling everything. But that microcontroller inside the 3D printer needs code to tell it how to control the hot end and the bed and the movement of the steppers. Well, that's called firmware. And that firmware was written in Arduino by the Marlin team. So it's Marlin firmware. And that gets programmed into that control board by Creality or whoever made the printer. And that knows how to control the stepper motors, the heater elements, the bed, everything, and gives you a functioning 3D printer. That is the application that that controller board was designed to do. Well, the steps that you've learned to take a 3D print file, slice it, and install it on a 3D printer and print it are very similar to the steps that you need to program a microcontroller and make that firmware. So as you know, if you want to make a 3D print, you either download a file or if you want to create one, you go into a software program, a CAD program. It could be Tinkercad where you build the design with blocks or it could be like Fusion 360 where you actually CAD design it with measurements and lay everything out. It all depends on what you're comfortable with, but that's how you're going to make a 3D file or the people that you downloaded it from, that's how they made the 3D file. And then you download it as a .stl file ready to be sliced. Well, the code for a microcontroller isn't a whole lot different. You're going to write that code either in blocks, you can do it in block form, or you can write it in text form. And there's other various ways you could really put it together, but those are the two main ones that you could create your code and then take that code and export it as a .c file or a .basic file or a .assembly file, whatever you're using to create it. But really, a text editor can produce that code, and then you're ready to send it to a compiler. 
And when you're doing 3D printing and you're sending it to a slicer, you choose your slicer. It could be Prusa Slicer, it could be Cura, but they all accept that .stl file, slice it, and export a .g code file ready for the 3D printer. Well, when you've written your code from the microcontroller, you take that file, the .c, .base, whatever it is, and you send it to a compiler that accepts that file. And that compiler will then, line by line, convert it into the ones and zeros which is the binary file that you need to program into the microcontroller. So now you have your G-code file and you're going to put it on an SD card or USB and your 3D printer, that firmware is going to read it, control the machine and print your 3D print. So in the case of electronics, I took that binary file from the compiler, put it into the microcontroller, in this case the Arduino Uno, and it's controlling an LED. This LED is actually flashing on and off, although you probably can't see with the bright lights, but that's the application that was written for the microcontroller. Well, there's a big step I kind of skipped over. That is, this circuitry is already built, so all I had to do was load the binary file and make the LED flash. Well, it's the same thing over here. There's a control board, but in order to make it into a 3D printer, it needed all these components put together to make the Ender 3. So you can actually build your own 3D printer by buying all the parts, just like you can build your own circuitry by buying all the components. So that's all part of the electronics, but if you built a 3D printer or repaired a 3D printer, you already know those steps. So it's just a matter of learning the components and how to put them together. And that's what I want to show you on the channel. All the little building blocks, the code and the circuitry to control individual components. Say you want to control an LCD, show you that. Say you want to control a stepper motor, I'll show you that. I'll show you how to read a switch and read a sensor. And then you can take all those building blocks that you learned on the channel, put them together however you want, and make whatever application you want out of your electronics. So that's what I want to do on the channel. And if you like that, let me know in the comments below. What made Arduino so special is that they grouped all those steps into one software program called an Integrated Design Environment, or IDE, the Arduino IDE. And in that software program, you can write your code, you can compile your code, and you can send it to the microcontroller through a USB connection by a bootloader that's already on here on the microcontroller. It's a firmware that's already on there, and it accepts the program and then will run it or they call it a sketch, but it'll accept that sketch or program and then it'll run it. But with that simplicity and the fact that it's open source, any code that you create, you have to share. So if you create a product that you want to sell using that microcontroller, you've actually got to share your code so China Incorporated could actually copy your design and compete against you. So that's one drawback. Also, you only have a few microcontrollers that you can work with Arduino, where if you have a true compiler and separate programmer setup, you can do whatever you want. And that's why I created Chapino, because I want to use a lot of different microcontrollers, and this module is kind of universal. It works with a hardware programmer, not a bootloader, so I can program any blank microcontroller, which are a lot cheaper than an Uno, and also I can choose different size memories, different features, and plug them into the same development board, use shields and everything with it. And that's some of the things I want to show you on the channel as well. So it's not just Arduino. I want to show you how you can go further and actually make products. Plus, along the way, you may want to make your own circuit boards. Now, I make my own circuit boards on a computer. I mill them on my PCB mill. That way I get my circuitry instantly. I don't have to wait for it to be shipped in the mail. But if you want to send it off, PCB way is a great way to get boards. You can get 10 boards for five bucks plus shipping. And you'll get them pretty quick. I mean, you gotta wait for it to ship depending on where you are, but they'll produce the boards in about three days and then ship it. Depending on how fast you need it, you can pay more to get it faster. But PCB Way is a great supporter of the channel, and I use them for all my circuit boards. They do a great job, their quality is good, and they even have assembly services. So I could actually have them build my boards and then ship me a bunch of assembled boards if I don't have time to solder them, or if I come up with something and maybe I want to mark it. That way I can have them do all the tough work and I just handle shipping it off to customers. So you have a lot of options with PCBWay. So check them out, pcbway.com.
And since you stuck around this long, I'm going to let you know that there's a link in the description below to the first chapter in my Arduino book. It'll take you through the basics of getting started with Arduino. And there's actually a link to a project in Tinkercad Circuit so you can simulate flashing the LED, just like I did here, but on the board itself. So you can try it out and feel like you've actually made your first program. So check it out. There's a link in the description below. It's free to download. And let me know if you like it. So I've taught you a lot about 3D printing. I want to teach you more about electronics. Even people who know about it, I want to teach you some tips and tricks that may help you so we can bring all these together. 3D printing, electronics, and make some really cool projects or products that maybe you can sell. My passion is 3D printing electronics and even milling my own circuit boards. I love doing them all. In fact, I do it all the time. It's just I focus the channel on the 3D printing end, and now I think it's time to bring the rest together. So if you're interested in this, let me know in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. I got playlists as well that include electronics. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way or a membership at things.com. And if nothing else, just click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollowbuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.